aware, we have been the attorneys who have filed the claim against the Tobago Regional Health Authority in the matter of the claim by Mr. Brinsley Shepherd into the debts of his wife and baby, Lysia Mitchell Shepherd and Ajani Shepherd. Now, what has happened is the TRHA, the Tobago Regional Health Authority, by the defense it has filed, has admitted liability for negligence and they have also said that having admitted liability for negligence they see no reason to release the report which has been the subject of much discussion and questioning by ourselves the media and members of the public generally in fact if you look at the newspapers you realize that it was raised in the senate we had three senators speaking about the issues of medical negligence. We had Senator David Small speaking of it. You had Senator Wheeler speaking about it. And you had um, Minister Delman Baker speaking about it also in Parliament. So it is clear that we have issues which go beyond just this one particular case. And our intention is that we must call the medical authorities to account to the public of Tobago and also the wider society of Trinidad and Tobago for things that are happening. Because if one has regard to, and I will show you this, the front page of today's news day, which speaks of this matter in San Fernando Hospital, where you have the mother saying, my baby did not have to die. This is her baby that was delivered. And then, of course, they are making allegations again of negligence. We have a serious problem in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, I have previously called upon the authorities to deal with these issues, and it appears that no one is willing to step forth and take the responsibility for the public. And I want to make it clear that in so doing, in making this call, it's not an attempt to stigmatize anybody or cast blame, but we want to raise the level and quality of health care for all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. And it's only by an objective examination and assessment of what is occurring that we will do so. We had the Gladys Gafu inquiry um, commission of Inquiry into the Health Sector of Trinidad and Tobago in 2007. Following that, there were several recommendations, many of which have never been implemented. We have made a call for there to be a commission of inquiry into the Tobago public health sector. We have not seen anything yet. And further to us filing this action, we have now discovered that there was another case a few days earlier prior to this matter, the case of Kai Duncan. She is here and she will be able to speak with you afterwards and tell, her, tell you what her experience was. But she also lost her baby at the Scarborough Hospital just a few days before this case of Lysia Shepherd, where both Lysia and her baby died. So what it has made us realize is that there are many more cases of negligence than we previously may have recognized or imagined. And more and more people are coming forward and giving their stories. So what we are doing and the purpose of today's um, announcement is to let you know that we shall be establishing a Medical Complaints Council of Trinidad and Tobago it will be located at our offices, both in Tobago and in Trinidad, and we are inviting all persons with medical negligence complaints to come forward. Since the authorities are not doing it, we have decided to step forward and do it. I have spoken to Ms. Chrislyn Moore, who is very interested as a colleague and an attorney to be part of any initiative in this regard, and we shall be holding a press conference next week on this. I've also spoken to Mr. Watson Duke, who is interested in being a part of some sort of initiative to ensure that we deal with these issues in the health sector, both in Trinidad and Tobago. 
of course, my primary focus has always been Tobago and will always be. But looking at what is happening and the cases which have occurred in Trinidad recently, it is clear that it's a widespread problem both in Trinidad and Tobago. So by establishing this Medical Complaints Council, we are inviting all persons with medical negligence complaints come forward tell your story let's get the information let's get the evidence let's get the medical records and let's treat with the authorities and tell them look these are the cases these are the facts these are the scenarios let us have some comprehensive discussions and objective analysis so that we can meet with these situations and treat with them because too many persons feel they don't have a voice when it comes to their concerns and claims of medical negligence. And when one looks at it, the number of cases which may be existing out there might really startle the nation when people start coming forward and telling their stories. So we are given an opportunity for persons to be able to have a voice, to be able to air their complaints, and we are doing this for the purpose of the social upliftment. It's not just a legal issue. These are not just legal issues. These go to the quality and standard of care and your quality of life generally in Trinidad and Tobago. And we want to see that developed because healthcare is a basic fundamental right of every citizen. And you must have quality healthcare. And unless and until we improve the standards and quality, we will always have scenarios such as this. Accidents can happen and of course in medical matters, one can never predict with 100% accuracy what would be the outcome. But if you have your proper protocols, practices and procedures clearly documented and properly monitored and managed, then at least you will help to eliminate some of the unfortunate scenarios we have seen recently. So by establishing this Medical Complaints Council, we are saying, look, let us get an idea of the full extent of the problem and get all persons, we invite all persons, regardless of, you know, whatever or whenever the matter occurred, come, let us document your story, bring in your medical records. We're going to be assisting you with writing to the hospitals if necessary to get your medical records because you would recall there was a case recently in Tobago that we did where we got Justice Sipasad to give a judgment whereby he made a very clear order and statement that public health authorities must not hinder citizens in getting free and easy access to their records because many of the medical institutions have been given trouble and difficulty for persons to get records. And Ms. Duncan will actually tell you her story in that regard because from her situation, which occurred October last year, what she indicates is that she's yet to get her medical records from the TRHA. So clearly, we have a huge problem in Trinidad and Tobago in the health sector. And we, by establishing this Medical Complaints Council, will be looking to give a voice to the voiceless and an opportunity for persons to get redress and for us all to have a better, better healthcare system in Trinidad and Tobago. So this Medical um, Complaints Council, is it that who is bringing this together? It's on the Well, no, it's, it's not under any banner or any, it's just concerned persons who also have an interest in seeing the quality of healthcare being raised and it's an idea that I mooted many years ago and I've said it several times on the talk shows, I've said that we need to establish it, I've asked for the government to do so, they have not done so, so I am taking the lead and saying look let's get it established for the benefit of the citizenry. So it's fair to say that Ms. Carrie Duncan is taking legal action against the TRHA through you? Well she has given us instructions. For that purpose. Yes. Well, at the press conference which we will be having next week, um, 
Ms. Crislin Moore and myself, and hopefully with the um, input also from Mr. Watson Duke, we will be announcing what we intend to do. It would also include a mobilization of persons in Tobago who have been affected by health care issues in Tobago. It will involve a mass mobilization of persons. So there's no legal action that, that can be taken? against the TRHA yes. for the report. Yes. Well, what they have done so far, they have said that they've passed the report to the THA. So it's a cat and mouse game they're playing, you know? So when you ask the TRHA for it, they're saying, look, ask the THA, the THA has it, you know? Then the THA says, you know, it's a TRHA report. But at the end of the day, it's the Tobago public that is suffering because we are the ones who are deprived of the benefit of the results of that investigation and report. And we will not let this issue rest. I want the politicians to understand that. We will not let this issue rest. The public in Tobago must see that report and they must see the original report in its untampered and unaltered format. They must get that, that is their right. So we are determined not to let that issue die. Any more uh, correspondence between you and Mr. Pastel? From the after the defense, where they admitted negligence, and they said they're not giving the report, nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. And you have attempted to get his attention, right? Uh, well, the thing is, based on the defense and based on what they are saying, mm -hmm. we are going to leave it for the court to take the next step in terms of that aspect. But from the public, aspect and from the social aspect we are continuing our quest and our call for them to deliver that report to the people of Tobago. Um, are you still on the case for um, the Williams, that, the, the fellow that died um, during the Rose blockade? Are you still on Oh, yes, that one, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so you uh, no, we've written to them, we've sent our pre action protocol letter, we've gotten no response, which unfortunately is the norm with the TRHA. They take very long to respond if they respond at all. They, 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 they are very familiar with our letterhead because <laughs> they've seen it several times. Mm -hmm. All right, time to bring it Yes, yeah, sure. So I will vacate.